As we wait to be gathered together with God in our heavenly home as the Holy Christian Church, what do we do now as the church? What do we do here on this earth? Welcome back to the Identity in Christ devotional based on the book of Ephesians as we are walking our way through this book of Ephesians and seeing that our identity is found in Christ alone. And in him we find our peace and our purpose. In him alone do we find our right standing before God and our hope for eternity. My name is Aaron Bublitz. I serve as pastor at Heritage Lutheran Church and it's uh, been my humble privilege to be able to walk through this wonderful book of Ephesians with you. We are in chapter 4. We have reached verse 7. We're going to read verses 7 through 13 today. Paul writes, But to each one of us grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ gave himself, or himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him, that is Christ, the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So we've been hearing a lot about the church here in this letter to the Ephesians, especially here in these last few devotions, what the church is, what it looks like. And here we get to see what the church does as it waits till it's gathered together with Jesus in heaven forever. Paul writes here that Christ has given gifts to his church. And by his grace, he has apportioned gifts to every believer in the church. And he quotes Psalm 68 here, uh, uh, talking about Christ. He's led by the Spirit to see that what was written there in Psalm 68 really was a foreshadowing about Christ to do that. He ascended on high, he takes many captives and gives gifts to his people. Right? We see the completed work of Jesus Christ as he ascends back into heaven. He takes many captives, meaning not, not slaves but, or you know, prisoners, but, but we're captivated by the love of Christ. We are captives because, because we're, we're his now and we belong to him and, and, and we love him and, and we live for him. And he gives gifts to his people. Right? And he goes in to say how he ascended, but he also that means he descended, that he came to this earth. And now... He who descended to this earth to win our salvation, right? To to live this earthly life perfectly, to die the death we deserve, to defeat death through his resurrection. He has now ascended back into heaven and he fills the whole universe. This is the Christ in whom we find our identity. But he hasn't left us alone. He ascended into heaven, but he hasn't left us to our own devices. He has given apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. And what's their purpose? To equip us. To equip him, uh, us, his people, for works of service so that the body of Christ, so that the church might be built up. So what's our purpose as we wait here? What is our purpose as the church here on earth? We get equipped for works of service. And how do we get equipped for works of service? By being taught God's word, by growing in our faith, by by um, knowing more, as we heard earlier in, in a devotion, that, that love of Christ Right? We're equipped for works of service as God shows us how to live. We heard yesterday right, to be humble and gentle and patient and bear with one another in love and, and seek peace. Right? Uh, these, we are equipped for works of service as we are immersed in the word, law and gospel, as these teachers and pastors and, and, and the apostles and prophets that we have in the Bible, that their writings, they, they are equipping us for works of service. That's what we're doing as the church. What else? What else do we do? Well, as we grow in our faith, 
We're no longer infants. We're no longer t tossed back and forth. We're not blown in here by every wind of teaching and the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. What that means is that we know God's word. We know the truths of God's word. And when false teachings come, right, we can stand firm against those because we've matured in our faith. We know what the truth is. We know what is false. We can stand firm against those those false teachings and the, that deceitful scheming. And, and you know, dear friends, there's a lot of that going on today. Satan is hard at work against the church and against the truth. Right? The, this world, this evil, wicked world is, is trying to say, you know, turn everything upside down and say, that is not truth. You make your own truth, right? Listen to your own truth. Uh, listen to the truth of the world, not the truth of, of that old book. But when we are in this word of God and we are becoming more and more mature in it, as the church, we can stand firm in those truths of God's word. We can proclaim this is truth to the world. But we do that. We do that in love. It says in verse 15, we speak the truth in love and there we become mature and we grow into him who is the head of the body that is Christ. So we speak the truth to one another. We speak the truth of God's word to the world, but we do that in love. We do that in the love that God has first shown us. So as the church, what do we do? We get equipped for works of service by the word and by those who are there to teach us and preach the word to us. We are there to know the truth and stand firm in that truth and then to speak that truth in love. And what's the result of all of that is the church does that here on earth. In Christ, that whole body is joined and held together. It grows and it builds itself, itself up in love as each part does its work. As we work together as the church, as we grow together as the church, as we cling to the truth together as the church, as we proclaim that truth together to the world as the church, Christ is being glorified. That body of believers, that church that is, is growing stronger as we get to proclaim Christ crucified and risen to the world. Let's pray and ask Jesus to help us do that. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you descended and you came into this world to live and die and rise for us and then you ascended again to show that all is done and you fill all things and you are there ruling over all things for the good of us, your church. Help us then now as we live our lives in this world that is so opposed to the truth uh, to be equipped for works of service, to make you known uh, as we love, as we, as we um, serve one another. Help us to, to know the truth as we grow in our faith that we're not infants tossed back and forth by the wind and the waves of, of false teachings, but we are stand firm in the truths of your word and then speak those truths in love to one another in the church and to the world. And through all this, you are glorified. Through all this, your church is strengthened uh, all so that we may hold firm to what we believe and what you have given to us until we get to be with you forever. Bless us in this and help us in this. We pray in your name. Amen. Wonderful again to be with you here today. God's richest blessings on your day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.